this Twitter tutorial is Twitter for every industry. My name is John David and my company is Moffy Hairdresser. You can read the full story about how I became a Twitter expert in the ebook companion to this video. So right now I'll just tell you that because of Twitter, I became a trademark brand, Moffy Hairdresser, as well as my novel did and my company. By marketing my novel, Mafia Hairdresser, through Twitter with the Twitter account at Mafia Hairdresser with one S, I really dove into social media marketing. Um, since most independent authors um, who are self-published become social media experts on at least one social media platform, and I also still do a few of my clients' hair and I produce tutorials such as this one, I naturally branched out into coaching because I help a lot of people. Whether this is the first time you've been introduced to any Moffy hairdresser videos or ebooks or tutorials or whatever, you're already a fan and I want you to know that we will always use the salon spa barber industry and not for profits and spiritual organization and, and charities as examples for videos and so forth. Because I come from the beauty industry and my hair customers are leaders of industry in other fields, I understand that using salons, spas, churches, and charity events are great to illustrate social media to any small or large business owner. I just don't coach the beauty industry on social media. I coach almost any industry. But by using my industry and not for, not for profits as examples to teach other industries allows me to cover a wide range like retail, online selling, scheduling, um, service, um, service providers, special events, customer satisfaction, employee satisfaction, um, customer acquisition and donor acquisition, and even ticket buyer acquisition. Um, social media business building and online relationships which turn into referrals are all in these examples. If you have received or bought the ebook Twitter for Salon Spas and Barbers and Every Industry, and you will be able to tell by the Amazon reviews that it is read by more industries than just the beauty barber sector. And that's because it's up to date, it's relatable to individual um, service providers such as massage therapists and hairdressers or CEOs of large businesses. I hope you take the time to read this ebook because it will give you a, um, a few more non-technical details as well as technical details that I won't cover in this video. And this video tutorial will go beyond that ebook. I will be explaining Twitter strategy a little bit more. I will be telling you how to create a winning Twitter profile that attracts new customers instead of repels them, like so many I see online. And you'll also learn the best way to spend your daily time on Twitter. I always advise 10 minutes a day on Twitter, uh, about five days a week or more. And I want to, uh, need to be able to reach out and find new customers. You'll spend an extra 10 minutes a day using uh, the Twitter search and the Twitter advanced search to find them and create a relationship and invite them to your business or point um, out that you have a product that, you, that they need or maybe you can provide them with information which is going to make them love you. Um, this video will delve into Twitter strategies, which seem simple to understand, but hardly anyone who is new on Twitter um, knows any of them, and that's why 60% of new users quit Twitter. Without some form of instruction, people quit. So, congratulations, you're reading the directions and you're viewing the directions, so let's get started. So just what is Twitter? Twitter is a micro-blogging social media platform. To newbies not yet on Twitter, the Twitter feed can look pretty cryptic and hard to understand. And to think, one must actually produce those seemingly enigmatic tweets. And that can be scary. But don't worry, by the end of this tutorial, you'll be more than comfortable tweeting. 
we've been taught um, what kinds of tweets work best and how to use visuals, video, and hashtags in your tweets to get new customers or create a broader community for your business or your brand. I want you to think of Twitter as a an actual live social mixer or a networking party. Some of us are great at mingling and some of us are not. And some of us are great at parties and some of us are not. But since Twitter is a virtual networking party, it's so much easier to meet people. On Twitter, you'll be meeting people through the visage of your Twitter avatar or your picture. Your name tag won't actually be on your suit jacket lapel as you wander around the party. It will be right here on your Twitter name, your actual name, and your Twitter bio. Just like walking into a real networking um, environment, you'll be perceived as the new kid, and people might not talk to you immediately, and rightly so. You see, whether you're a manicurist or you represent a well-known company, all of us that have been to this party and have been here a long time have put in the work. Um, we work together and we just want to wait around and see what you're made of. Are you going to respond if I ask you a question? Are you going to help me out by retweeting some very important information, information that's important to me? Um, or are you just going to walk around the party and hand out your business card and extol the virtues of your nail polish or your products? Um, you may get business by doing this, but you won't be building any relationships which can turn into much more business than you ever dreamed of possible. Um, with Twitter, uh, you have to put the social in the social media, just like LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram, Pinterest, Google+, Snapchat, and most other social media platforms. You've got to be social, you've got to be reciprocal, tactical, and consistent. Otherwise, you will fail and blame the social media platform. Twitter by far has the simplest strategy. If you think that all I'm going to do is ask you to, every month, to produce 75 to 150 uh, automated tweets, meaning that you'll use a third-party app like Tweet Jukebox. You'll have five tweets a day, um, and you'll space them out um, per day, per week. And then every day, all you have to do is log onto your Twitter account with your tablet or PC or smartphone and spend five minutes a day responding to anyone who liked your tweet or possibly invite them to your business or charity ball if that's appropriate. Even if your tweet was not about your business or what you do, and someone liked your tweet, this opened up a virtual handshake which can lead to business. Um, with Twitter, it is through your tweets, um, sharing information about our businesses, as well as your personal hobbies and likes and interests that we build relationships. Just think about a live party. You might have a drink in your hand and you'll pass by a group of um, people talking about your favorite football team or a TV show that you love. You'd probably stop and join the conversation, right? Um, and you probably didn't even come to this event to talk about that. But leads are leads. And what do you tweet? You will tweet the exact same things that you would talk about when you attend a live event while representing your company. You might talk about football at first, right? When you think about Twitter as a virtual networking Twitter event, it is easy to understand what you would say and what you would not. You want to look like a professional so you attract more business and you already know the parameters of what topics you would avoid and which ones you'd like to talk about. And no one just talks about business. We talk about our uh, special needs kids. We talk about skydiving. We talk about vacations, our favorite shampoos, and our pastimes. These are icebreakers, and we will use them in your tweets as well. Another five minutes a day on Twitter 
will be to strategically find new customers and initiate Twitter conversations. How you do that will be coming up, but first, I'm going to have to explain two things at the same time. If you're reading or have read Twitter for salons, spas, barbers, and every industry, I'm talking about your Twitter profile, which is ex explained in depth at the beginning of the ebook, and I'm also going to talk about your customer avatar, which is actually towards the end of the ebook. So it doesn't really follow a pattern here, right? But it'll come together. In this video tutorial, I'll actually be able to connect the dots a little bit better for you. Okay. So you decide you're going to get more customers, donors, or volunteers for your organization so you can grow, right? Or maybe um, you're like me. When I opened my Twitter account, I was going to launch my ebook, Mafia Hairdresser. And everything I learned about social media, which was super new at the time, um, told me that I had to build up a following before I self-published my novel. I needed to build a following and build a brand awareness before I began to sell my ebook. So when it was for sale, I would immediately be able to sell copies to the people I had previously established relationships with. Whatever your reason for becoming a Twitter user, you can't just walk into a networking party like Twitter wearing anything you want, say anything you want, or do anything you want. No matter how cute, sexy or funny or, or original you may think you are, all of us at the party might take one look at you and say to ourselves, he doesn't look like us and he doesn't fit in. If you're a barbershop owner or you're an artistic director of a theater company, I don't think you're going to walk into a professional environment, a real-time professional environment, wearing a tube top and daisy big shorts, would you? Maybe you would. You want customers to be able to fork your services, and those customers are at these events. Well, they have money to help your company, they have lots of money to sponsor theaters, and guess what? They are wearing suits and ties and wearing business casual, just as you would expect at a party like this. Now, you might be in a creative industry, and you wouldn't be expected to wear that suit at your place of business, but you certainly don't want to repel future businesses or ticket buyers by wearing poor attire to the Twitter party. Let me state here in my industry, the salon, spa, barber industry, we have one of the poorest ratings for Twitter pictures and bios and headers. This is your wear. I will explain in depth how to make a great Twitter profile, but I want to point out that your Twitter picture, your bio, your header, it is equivalent to what you're wearing to a party. I'll use real life examples of people and businesses who followed me recently on Twitter and, I, and I'll do a little critique, which is kind of mean, but I'm going to do it. You need to know who your Twitter avatar is or your customer avatar. Um, you know that you have to have a picture that represents you on Twitter when you uh, tweet, right? That's your Twitter picture or your Twitter bio picture or your Twitter avatar. What your customer avatar is, which is more important, is a fictional character that represents your ideal prospect. And who is your ideal prospect? You can find that information from your existing customer base. Um, why must you know who your customer avatar is? Because by knowing who your ideal customer uh, avatar is, you'll set your own guidelines as to what you will wear to attract your customer avatar on Twitter. After you build a relationship on Twitter, you can relax a little. Uh, when you invite that customer avatar into your business for a haircut or a play or whatever. Now you may be able to dress a little avant-garde at your place of work, but when you attend a mixer with even your existing customers, you don't want to embarrass them by wearing short shorts or whatever. 
um, you're in their world, so be respectful. This is a professional world, a social media world. So let's go a little bit deeper into customer avatar because not only will it define how you will present yourself online but, uh, with your organization on Twitter, it will help you outline what you'll tweet about. Um, in the beauty industry, there is a big trend for women of color to embrace natural hair. There are new salons opening up every day to accommodate natural hair. These salons are catering to the customer avatar who is female and who may be attracted to botanicals or natural hair products. Number one, women of color. Number two, botanical product lover. So I'm building a customer avatar. So if I was a hairdresser who specialized in natural cuts and styles for this customer profile, I would need customers to serve and so they could pay me and use my skills or all of this would be useless and I wouldn't have money to go to the movies and do the things that I love. But I better learn how to market myself to get that customer avatar. Am I right? Yes. Well, the first thing anyone has to do to market themselves is to be um, thorough with Twitter, Facebook, or email and to know who your customer avatar is and then you'll know where they are and how to spot them and how to attract them. Of course, once you have their attention, it will be up to you or me or us to invite them to your salon, salon and that's called a call to action, which is explained later. If you watch my video, Social Media 101, and read the ebook companion, Social Media 101, you'll know that you must first look at your existing customer. If you make the most money from 10 or 20 percent of your customer base, that's your customer avatar. Simply ask them via an anonymous form, which you can reward them for if they're filling out. Ask them their age, their sex, their income, their race, their spending habits in your business and online. And if you're a charity, ask them how much money they plan to donate and how many uh, dollars they spent last year. If you're a theater, ask them how many of your shows they've been to and which ones they loved. If you sell a product, ask them to rate it and give you um, details about that product, of what they liked and didn't like. Um, and don't be weird about polls, do it again and again. The more you know about your customer avatar, the more you'll be able to adjust your product services, um, your services, your customer experience, um, especially through social media and Twitter. Or ask them, um, just simply straight out ask them when they're in your business. You need to know as much about your customer avatar as possible. You need to have a clear, concise, good picture headshot of the tweeter who is representing your company via Twitter. People's faces get more followers than logos or anything else. Pictures of storefronts suck. Don't use them. If you are using logo as your Twitter picture, you're saying you're a big brand and you think no one would um, expect an actual person to be tweeting for your company. Well, good for you. You're as big as Coca-Cola, Target, and American Airlines. Um, I believe that if you're a person that's tweeting for a company, you should be rewarded. And if you're representing your company on Twitter, your face should be in the Twitter picture area. Remember, if I'm a seasoned tweeter, I'm at the Twitter party, I'm going to strike up a conversation with a person and not necessarily with a logo stuck to that person's face. All I ask is you try an A-B test. 
see how many people follow you in two weeks with the actual person tweeting for the company with their picture there and see who follows you for the next two weeks by using your um, logo in the picture. And don't forget to add the first name in the bio of the person tweeting for your company. Um, this is great practice. You don't have to use their name in the real name category, but that wouldn't hurt as well. If someone takes the place of the operator who's tweeting now, uh, you simply put the other person's name in the name category and replace their picture. People get it. We move on. Um, this brings me to how people might find you on Twitter. If you're looking for, say, a hair salon or spa in Chicago, you would put those words in a search on Twitter. You would get categories to view on your search topic keywords that you used. You'll see uh, top tweets, meaning the most uh, viewed tweets with those keywords. You'll also get a live category, um, which will show the latest tweets containing your keywords and each tweet just earlier than that one, etc., etc. You will also be given the accounts category, which will show you Twitter accounts that have used Salon or Spa or Chicago in their bios. This is a great search feature because you can also search for your customer avatar with Twitter's search tool. But more of that in a minute. Um, what I need you to understand is that the words in your bio matter. You want to use as many keywords that a prospective customer might use in a Google search to find you as possible. A great Twitter profile bio has very little extraneous words such as an address or phone numbers or words like we believe and I am and I love pretty things. I cannot stress to you that the bio words are very important to be found both on Google and Twitter to find you. Um, your address and phone numbers are on your website and that is where your client avatar who uses Twitter expects it to be. Besides, Twitter gives you special blocks and add-ins for addresses and websites in your city, and that's factored into your search as well. Once again, be as professional as your customer avatar in, on Twitter, and don't necessarily copy bios and pro, uh, profiles from your own artistic industry. Guess what? It's your corporate customer who probably knows what they're doing on Twitter. Copy them. are a mom or if you love sci-fi and you will be tweeting about it on Twitter along with your business then go ahead and put those words mom and sci-fi in your profile too. You'll get other mom followers and sci-fi fans to follow you too and if you can build a relationship talking about those subjects and then invite them to your business uh, when the time is right then that is great. But if your customer avatar um, likes these things, I would say state them in your bio for sure. Um, so I've talked about customer avatars and what goes into a great profile. Um, both of these subjects are in depth explained in my ebooks, but I'll repeat the fact that you have to have a clear picture, a bio chock full of keywords um, that one might use in a search for your type of business in a Google search. Um, you must have a website, even if you are an individual who works for another company, all explained in Social Media 101. And that website URL has to have a place in your Twitter profile, and it's got its own little space to do that. 
uh, and people click on your website to buy your products or service or contact you offline. That's where it goes. Your address also has its own special field and that's where that goes, not in your bio. The last thing you need to remember to make a great Twitter profile is to have a great Twitter header. That's that big space above your head. Do not leave it blank or just leave a solid color. Um, have a crystal clear, perfectly sized PNG or JPEG photo um, graphic which visually describes your business. Just scroll down the list of people I follow at Mafia Hairdresser and you'll immediately see what works and what does not. This is where you can um, put weekly promotions or use clever text or your logo. Don't waste this valuable advertising real estate. It's such great space. Make a great Twitter header. Um, now that you know that you've got to look as professional as your customer and include some of the interests of your customer into your bio, we should cover what content you will be tweeting about and get some good Twitter conversations going. It's that um, Twitter conversation that will turn into actual business for you. So you've got to mingle, you've got to be social in social media, social media, social media.